It's time for our political panel, uh, our regular, who, well, he's become a regular, David Smith, a Labor member for Bean joins us. G'day, David. Uh, good morning, Stephen. How are you? Uh, very well. And filling in for Zed Seselja is Angus Taylor, the Liberal member for Hume. Angus, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Stephen. Thanks for having me. Um, the premiers of our two biggest states are under a bit of pressure at the moment, and uh, obviously Gladys Berejiklian uh, has... Um, uh, it, it was, look, a, a fairly explosive in ICAC yesterday, and I'm going to go on the record and say that I think Gladys is probably the best of our premiers at the moment, but it's like being the world's tallest dwarf. Well, S Stephen, I mean, the point I'd make here is that I judge premiers on their outcomes and it's very clear how New South Wales has been going and how Gladys has been going with the virus. Yes, she had a bad day yesterday, there's no question about that. But look, New South Wales has been in, in an enviable position relative to other states. Uh, and, you know, you only have to look across the border to the south, to Victoria, to see that. Uh, and she should be given credit for that because I think it's absolutely remarkable. I've had a series of outbreaks in my electorate, which have been managed unbelievably well, including just recently, just in the last few days. Each time the tracing has occurred quickly, uh, the containment has happened, the testing has happened at a rapid pace on scale, uh, absolutely remarkable. And uh, I, th I think we should always remember that, despite the fact that she did have a hard day yesterday. Uh, but outcomes are what really matters to the people in New South Wales. Speaking of hard days, David, uh, Daniel Andrews has probably had his hardest two days at these press conferences. We're uh, apparently supposed to clap like trained seals that he's turned up 100 days in a row. But it's only the last couple where he's actually been forced to answer questions by somebody that's not a journalist in Peter Credlin. Look, look, Stephen, I think one thing we can say actually about all our state territory leaders is that they've all actually done a pretty extraordinary job right across this year, and uh, and that, that includes um, Andrew Barr here in, here in the ACT. But so fundamentally, I guess, when you when you want the top job and you're doing the top job, uh, there's, there's always responsibility that comes with that in terms of uh, how, how you respond to uh, questions and challenges. In well, apparently not in Victoria. Despite Nobody despite takes the... responsibility down there. Well, I, th I think we've actually seen a couple of people who actually have. We've seen, uh, we've seen a head of the public service take responsibility. We've seen a, a minister take responsibility. Uh, look, it's, uh, but, but that said, I think at, at, the, at the end of the day, uh, even in uh, hard and challenging circumstances, there's still, there's still an extra expectation uh, that governments are, are responsible for the outcomes uh, they produce. The budget, uh, let's have a look at the budget. It's been handed down. Labor has made its budget in reply. Uh, Anthony Albanese made his speech uh, a couple of days later. Uh, now debate over whether stage three tax cuts will be honoured by uh, the Labor Party. David, why do you guys not want us to have more of our own money? Well, uh, Stephen, I think the, the one thing that, that Labor's been pretty clear on is, first of all, that supporting uh, the first the first two tranches of, of tax cuts and was suggesting that the second one should have should have come forward uh, and look in, in relation to uh, the, third, the third tranche uh, our, our issues there are probably more around concerns about whether this is the the, the right right decision at this time and the, the reason the reason for this is it's pretty simple, so is, is that we know that we want to we need to get uh, bang for every buck that we spend or every every buck that we, we we don't spend, if you like. And what we know is that uh, uh, tax cuts that um, particularly go to the top end of town are probably uh, going to have the least least amount of effect. But, um, look, this is something that we're still prepared to work with the government. Uh, we're, we're, we're prepared to let them uh, get get uh, measures, measures through... But, but it doesn't mean that we're not going to um, uh, be critical at times or uh, raise, raise concerns about whether there might be more effective, effective uh, ways to uh, deliver the outcomes. Angus, that's a fair call, though, isn't it? The people with lo higher incomes are less likely to spend uh, as much of their disposable income as those on lower incomes? Well, we're talking about tax cuts that are coming in in 2024-25, phase three. And uh, so the question is whether Labor will support those, and there's no indication of that uh, at all. In fact, quite the opposite. But look, the important point here about tax is this is, this is people's money. It's not government. We don't start from the assumption that this is government money and it, they, the government gives it back to you. This is the money that people have gone out and worked hard to earn, and we should tax them as little as possible. 
Uh, you know, this whole budget has been about making sure we get the private sector up and running again. It's the private sector that will get us out of uh, the situation we're in right now. The public sector has kept going through uh, COVID. It hasn't, it hasn't slowed. Uh, so it's the private sector that we've got, we've got to get moving. And what we handed down was a budget that's focused on getting investment, employment, uh, and, of course, uh, money in people's pockets so that they can spend uh, to make sure we get that private sector activity up and running as fast as possible as we come out of we come out of the pandemic well i always use the analogy that if the school bully only takes half your lunch money one week he's not actually doing you a favor uh, by taking uh, less than he used to take off you um let's move forward uh, something i think we can all agree on these uh, travel bubbles uh, that are being considered singapore japan and south korea uh, obviously new zealand already in the works uh, angus it, 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 we're still t talking a fair way off but um Geez, it's, uh, I mean, we've got to start to do something, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. Look, we want to get New Zealand up and running. That's the one to focus on first and foremost, and then the others can follow. We need a blueprint for how we'll set these up. These are not things we've done before. So uh, let's get New Zealand up and running. That's the focus right now. And I think that gives great opportunity for, for uh, get, getting this whole thing moving. Yeah, but we do have to open up. There's no question about that. Uh, you know, New, New South Wales has shown what can be done if we manage this well. Uh, and that means that there's real potential now to open up and get things moving. Dave, you've been out on the... Um, I think the ACT's handled it fairly well too. You've been out on the uh, campaign trail with your Labor colleagues ahead of Saturday's election. Are you feeling a different sort of campaign this time, given that over 100,000 people have already voted? Oh, yeah, look, look, very much so, uh, Steve. And it'll be interesting uh, how many people actually vote on election day. But, uh, look, uh, the, the ACT government, uh, like many governments... Uh, it has almost had everything thrown at them this year. But of course, we had the bushfires and the smoke pollution. We had that mad hailstorm. And then, of course, um, like uh, other state and territory governments, it's, it's about how we uh, deal with the challenges of the pandemic. And, uh, look, I, I, the, the mood on, on the booths uh, is, is a pretty positive one. I think they realise we've got a, quite a competent and experienced government doesn't mean that they always like everyone in the government, but they, they realise they're, they're pretty competent experience and they probably want to get it out of the way before we're, uh, hopefully the Raiders get, get on their way to another grand final. <laughs> yes, indeed. Gentlemen, thank you for your time this morning. David Smith, member for Bean, and Angus Taylor, member for Hume. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Uh, we'll